Aisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Everybody, you know, it's June 13th. Anyway, I have a very nice guest here with me, and it was a pleasure for me to get him. And uh, actor, poet, and model. His name is Tyra Shee, Midnight Schuler. I want to welcome you to Make It Happen. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, um, actually, I know that, uh, tell me a little bit about the name. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about your name? I know it's like Swahili. So my birth name is Swahili. Yeah. And it means messenger. Okay, which is really good. And you were raised actually by your great grandmother, your grandmother, and your mother. Yes. So how was that without, you know? Um, so I was so how I got the name, I was born in um nineteen seventy six, mm -hmm. around the time when Alex Haley came out of roots. Oh okay. and a lot of parents were naming the children with African names. And that's how I ended up getting named Tarishi. And my mom, she worked and then my grandmother was um, helping to take care of my great grandmother, so I spent all time with all three of them together. So there's times my great grandmother raised me, there's times my grandmother was raising me, and there's times my mom was raising me. So that's like based on that foundation of those three women. Mm -hmm. But Tyreeshi is a very, very nice name. Thank you. <laughs> I tell you, um, actually, how was it growing up? You know, with all three of your grandmother, your mother, your great grandmother. You know, um, it was a very good experience. And it, I learned a lot of values um, that you don't see today in um, children and being and their parents. I learned, um, definitely learned respect. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, all three women. Huh? Um, I remember my um, grandmother, like, would say phrases like, don't you roll your eyes at me. You, you roll your eyes at me one more time, I'm going to smack in the back of the head and they start rolling down the street. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. But she never did. <laughs> but, it, but as a child, when you hear things like that, you believe that you're going to hit you in the back of the head and your eyes will roll on the street. Oh my goodness but gracious. It was, um, I, I regret nothing. I definitely was, definitely appreciate that upbringing. Mm. It definitely was, um, helped me be the person I am today. Yes, it definitely does. Um, I've seen you in your poetry. You're very outspoken. You're spoken words. Thank you. And um, you do acting. Let's get into part of acting first. I want to talk about a little bit about acting. Okay. Uh, what made you want to be the acting? Is it because of your poetry, right? Um. So the acting um, component was more. I did a lot of poetry, and I said, "No, I want to branch out and do other things, and I want to try acting." Um, I never thought of myself as an actor in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I and the acting um, aspect came later on while I was doing the poetry. And then I auditioned for a play um, wide open and then I got the part. And then from there, that was the beginning of me doing a whole series of plays and films and short film, short movies. Yeah. And um, wide open was here and over at different places too. Yes. It, start, it was in Hartford, first of all. Hartford. And what are the other places that they were in Wide Open? Um, we did it at Hartford. We did it at um, Central Connecticut State University. Mm -hmm. um, at, remember, we did it um, down in North Carolina. Mm. Wow. That's, that's really good. North yes. Carolina is nice. I know. You met a lot of people. <sighs> In North Carolina? No, actually, it was South Carolina. South Carolina? And then we, because that was South Carolina, and then we made our way up to North Carolina, and we saw a couple of places, so it's South Carolina. Yeah. So I hope I'm correct. If I'm wrong, <laughs> then I'll begin a phone call for some individuals <laughs> and put editorial notes. <laughs> uh, and it was by Cheryl Renee. Cheryl Renee, yes. Yeah, she's a very nice, very nice girl. Um, actually, you did, we were talking about acting earlier, and you said your first acting um, in film was Love. Um, hopefully, if I get this right. Oh, excuse me. Love Unconditional. Yes. And um, your role was Chris Johnson. Am I correct? Um, the gentleman by the name of Chris Johnson. My role, Love Unconditional, my name was um, 
Curtis. Oh, Curtis. Curtis Johnson. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Curtis. <laughs> Curtis Johnson. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And um, wow. How did you um, actually get that particular role in doing that? Um, so it's funny. Poetry Again. actually was the, the gateway to a lot of things mm -hmm. in the arts. I was performing in New Haven at um, Stetson Library. Mm -hmm. And one of the individuals I was in the library, his name was Will Mobley. He was the director mm -hmm. and the writer of the film, Love Unconditional. And he saw my performance and he came up to me, gave me a card and asked if I would be interested in, in um, playing a character in his movie. Oh, I said, sure. Great. So I haven't heard from him. And eight months later, I get a phone call from someone. I didn't know who it was. And he, he told me who he was, um, how we met in the library. So mm -hmm. he asked me, am I still interested in playing the character in the movie? I said, yes, definitely. So we sat at Dunkin' Donuts. We had a conversation. He explained to me the character he wanted me to play. Mm -hmm. And I said, definitely, I'm looking forward to it. Wow. And then um, it was definitely a challenging character. So, Wow, that's good. Um, you play a lot of roles. And uh, I've seen you in the video. I've been watching you. <laughs> I looked at your bio, very good bio. Thank Loved you. Loved your bio. Um, you're also a model. So tell me a little bit about your modeling. Um, so my modeling came from people keep telling me over the years, you should try modeling, you should try mm -hmm. modeling. And then one day I say, nah, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll try and see how it works out. So I went to a couple auditions and my runway walk was horrible. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I, I could not walk <laughs> at all. Uh, so this gentleman named uh, Gregory um, Drayton, he um, saw my walk. He took me on his wing, he coached me how to walk. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, he definitely um, helped my modeling career, career as that, yeah. an aspect and walking. So I did some fashion shows, local fashion shows, pictures here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I appeared in a, in a magazine, um, African, New African Woman. Oh, really? That's in the UK. Okay. Um, another magazine, um, I think it's um, Total Eclipse, is um, a publication out of um, Boston. Okay. Massachusetts. So right now I don't do any more um, modeling. modeling. I do a lot of modeling in my own, mm -hmm. basically artistic modeling, abstract photos and things of that, et cetera, on nature. Yeah. I think that's very different too. I, I really like the way um, all your pictures are, um, and everybody should just check them out <laughs> on his um, bio. Read the bio because the bio was so good. Uh, you like teaching kids, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. So do you teach um kids on i'm going back to poetry now mm -hmm. you keep, teach kids on um that are interested in doing poetry do you teach them how to do that or what do you actually teach the kids um, so you do your poetry thing? um there's a high school in hamden connecticut um i'll make sure i get right um Eastums, mm -hmm. and i go there and help the t um, students with their poetry so there's another um, teacher there um karen I can't remember her last name for the love of God. <laughs> um, she's the teacher there, so I go there and help um, with the students um, with, the, um, with their poetry. Okay. And outside of the students, um, I coach individuals here and there that wants to be take their poetry um, serious and go further with it. Yeah. Um, do you find out some of the kids that are, have a hard time trying to do poetry, but they're really interested? Um, all the students, individuals I ran into, or believe it or not, they like really they really grasp the concept of poetry uh -huh. and they just, um, they're phenomenal. Mm -hmm. They're like, I believe most of them are better writers than me. Really? <laughs> so my aspect is I help, I steer them in the right direction of making their message more clear mm -hmm. and how to be more passionate with their um, delivery and what they're um, trying to say in their poetry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. I also met you at MCC on Maine, too. Yes. And that was very exciting. And it's nice to see you do poetry with two other people. Yes. You know, and it's like, gee whiz, how did you do all that? You know, it's very, very, very exciting. And I love your shirt. Oh. It says poetry on it. Yeah, I got, um, so this is, um, this is like, um, it says um, National Poetry Slam 2013. So yeah. each year, um, I go to the National Poetry Slam mm -hmm. and they have a new shirt, um, a new logo, and I grab a shirt, wear it, and bring it home. So this is like one of my, um, this is probably my second favorite, third favorite. 
because mm-hmm. the whole tie and everything. Yeah. You've been a very busy person. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, you going back and forth to California, Boston, different places. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness gracious, how do you get all that energy? <laughs> 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 um, can you talk about where have you been, you know, in the past couple of months or the past couple of years? Um, oh. Past couple. Oh, what you so, been actually been up to? Um, so I've been doing poetry, working on uh, art with my friend of mine, very good friend, Robert Cooper. So that's what, um, the artistic pictures that you've been seeing. So I didn't post on my Facebook and series. Mm-hmm. So we do a bunch of pictures that tell a story through right. pictures, no words. And as for my poetry, I've been to California um, back in 2014, about to go back to California in 2015 with mm-hmm. the Connecticut Slam team, Verbal Slap. Oh, wow. How many people are on this team? So there's six members on this team. There's, um, I'm the Slam Master. You have the um, perform, performance coach, Darlene Brandon. Mm-hmm. You have the head coach, writing coach, Qualo Smekton. And you have um, Chief Michael, Michael Chief Peterson. He's a three-time Grand Slam champion. Mm-hmm. You have Tracy Mind of Mind Evolution Codwell, she's been a team oh, yeah, twice. Oh yeah, yes, definitely. <laughs> and um, Jerome Geyer, he's been a team twice. And so right now, actually, as soon as I finish this interview, I'm going to go head out to Baltimore with the Slam team to um, perform a poem. So um, with the team, so it's like the Connecticut Slam team versus mm-hmm. the Baltimore Slam team. We have a little fun scrimmage. Oh wow! And um, so. Also, we're accepting donations to the Slam team. So, if you might want to donate, they could go to www.gofundme forward slash verbal slap. Mm-hmm. And as I've been, so I've been in California, Boston, um, North Carolina with the Connecticut Slam team doing poetry on my own. I've been to um, down south, Florida, North Carolina, um, DC, Maryland, mm-hmm. all over New York. Um, August, I plan on going to. Virginia, uh, not Virginia, um, Chicago, Detroit. Okay. And right now I have a video of mine circulating in the UK. Mm-hmm. What's the name of that video? It's called um, Love, um, it's called Love, One Four, Love 146, and it's called You Are Not Forgotten. Oh, okay. So it deals with um, human trafficking victims. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at that last night. Boy, that that is, that is really interesting. And uh, actually you were in a, um, actually a group that, actually supports yes uh, not to you know have the, these women uh, human trafficking which i think is it's very serious yes and um i think everybody should check that out on his website because um that is very important and they have all these girls and they do human trafficking and they have prostituting them which is you know and yes, terrible yeah definitely but um there is like a little scene on the website that goes down you have so many <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, well, a lot, which is really good. Um, let's see. I would um, actually, I want to just tell everybody to go up on the website and check it out. It's very good. Um, what do you really want to accomplish, you know, this year in your life as far as poetry, acting, and uh, partial, you know, um, modeling, partially taking pictures, you know, being a photographer, being the person that's being photographed. Um, this year, I like to um, finish making my series with um, Robert Cooper. Complete the um, the series. So, series number seven, we're going to release this year. I'm not giving no dates until we actually finish it, but we're mm-hmm. working on it. So, I want to finish that. I want to um, finish my poetry CD. Okay. Yeah, oh. I heard that you was having a CD. Yeah. So right now there's an EP online. If you go to my website, right, you can download the EP. It's for free. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about five tracks. Okay. EP is free. Um, I want to finish writing my um, short story, movie script. Okay. <laughs> um, what else I want to do? Travel. Okay, you're doing it. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah. Now I want to um travel for um educational purposes. I want to go to different places around the world just to learn and appreciate and experience the culture okay. from a, a traveler point of view, not a tourist. So okay. I like appreciating going to, or going around the world, different places, and I want to learn from the culture versus being somewhere that you see on a postcard. <laughs> that's not, that's, that's more like for fun and recreation, but I want to be um, immersed and immense with the culture. Mm-hmm. So if I go somewhere and people are um, 
sleeping outside. I want to be out there sleeping outside. Mm-hmm. And you want to just get the experience. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely yeah. love the experience. And then you're probably right up. A little uh, poetry, uh, spoken word about that. Yeah. I I can't (laughs) wait to hear that one. But anyway, we'll be right back with Make It Happen with Tyra She. Bollywood Bar and Grill. Have a special event? Why not have it in the Maharaja Banquet Hall and experience authentic Indian cuisine of the East and the Himalayas? Located at 2333 Main Street, Glastonbury, Connecticut. For more information, call them at 860-734-0001. That's 860-734-0001. Or visit them online at BollywoodGrillGlastonburyCT.com. These are the monsters of the road. Ever drive alongside a tractor trailer in the rain? Scary. You're hoping they don't change lines. Now they see you, now they don't. This monster can crush you in an instant. They may be insured for millions, but you're not thinking of that in a dangerous situation. I'm attorney Jeffrey Dresden. Have an accident, you know it to be. Because this is what we do. 24-7, 11, 22. Rishi. All right. Midnight Schuler. Oh, and I want to welcome you back. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just reading a couple of things and um, something that really sticks out. You said love is your addiction and it allows you to be the artist that you are. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, which is really good. And you get to meet people when you're doing poetry slams, yes. doing your poetry. Um, and actually I want to mention love until the world ends. Now, tell me a little bit about that. So the, um, the idea behind that poem was, so imagine you were in a relationship or if you are in a relationship and the world was going to end right now, what would you want to do? What would be the last thing you want to do? And most people would say, go run to church pray to God, get their sins right, et cetera, et cetera. I, this is my personal opinion, and everybody had a general personal opinion, this is how I feel. I feel that if you're living your right right now, where you're supposed to be living your mm-hmm. right, um, living, your, living your life, then there'll be no need to run the church or pray for goodness because you already know how your life is. And God does not judge you for your um, actions. He judges you by what's in your heart. So... If the world was to end right now, the very moment, then I want to be with I want to be with the person that I love the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, actually, there's a nice video about that. <laughs> I was watching it last night, and you were mostly concerned about working and doing this now. Oh, yes, yes. I'm glad you got. Minutes. Thank you. I'm glad yeah. you got the got the concept. Yeah, and it's like you know, you leave work, you call you you call your woman up, you say, just just meet me somewhere, just meet me somewhere, you yes. know, meet you, um, I think it was at some kind of was train that, station. Or so the whole uh, video was filmed on location, it was at Grand Central Station in New York. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Really nice video, and it was like, you know, it, it expressed that she was really important rather than just going to work, right? Yes. Now. Yeah, and um, I urge you, everyone, the viewers out there, just to check it out, because it's really a nice video. I really love the video. Um, 
actually what my what I want to ask you now is what um, type of inspiration would you give someone who wants to write poetry or spoken word and um, wants to be an actor and wants to get the feel all the feels that you've been doing what kind of advice would you give them um the only the best advice i give them is follow your dreams don't let no one um deter you for the deter you from what you want to do um stay the course it's not going to be easy it's gonna be a lot of hard work yes however if this is in your heart this is your passion of being an actor poet whatever genre art you want to do stay the course <laughs> definitely um you're going to Anything you want in life is not going to come easy. You have to work for it. Um, and long as you, um, long as you have a passion for it and a love for it and is a love for what you're doing, then you always you always win. Enjoy it. What you enjoy doing. it. Yeah. Mm, good point. Good point there. Um, also, I want to just touch around um, the martial arts that you do. Okay. <laughs> talked about that earlier. Hey, you're talking about Wing Chun, Wu Chun. Tang Su Do. I hope I pronounce these all correctly. All right. <laughs> so it's um Tang Su Do. Oh, I didn't get that one. <laughs> but <laughs> Tang Su Do. Oh, Tang Su Do. Um, Wu Shu, and the Wing Chun. I only did like two months of Wing Chun. Mm -hmm. Um, Wing Chun is basically what um, Bruce Lee did. Does right. And then later on, he he um started doing. He um kind of like was the founder of martial art, mixed martial arts. So my first. Um, in an introduction to martial arts was Tung Sido. Oh, okay. And that's Korean um, martial arts. And, oh. um, and then my second was on um, Wushu, and that's um, Chinese Kung Fu. Okay. And you are you probably more familiar with Wushu um, from movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Right, that's um, nice. Jet Li, he yeah. does Wushu. So that was my foundation. And then from there, I did some Wing Chun, some Taekwondo. Probably, okay. like, I, I did, did six months. Uh, Taekwondo, though, but the, most of my uh, martial art background is Tung Sido and Wushu. Oh, wow. Okay. And good concentration and very good discipline, too. Yes. I, um, I got into martial arts. Well, my, me, my main reason for getting into martial arts was at the age of 17, my mom wanted to make sure me and my brother knew how to defend ourselves. Mm. So she sent us to martial arts school, oh, okay. which was Tung Sido. And then from there, ironically, I never gotten into a fight ever since I started training mm -hmm. um, because you some people might think because um, you know martial arts you should start now start not look start, start looking for trouble or right. you look for the chance to get into fight but actually it's the opposite um, martial arts is, a, is all about the discipline and avoiding the conflict mm. as possible so I love martial arts for the discipline the, the philosophy the culture and the art in itself and wushu is probably like my favorite because it's more of a performance art. Okay. And it's, it's like, it's beautiful. And it's like, when I do it, I feel like peace. It's just, really? yeah, yeah. It's, you, you know, it's just being one with yourself. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Mm. I encourage anyone to uh, pick up martial arts, mm. no matter uh, what style it is. Just um, pick it up. You, um, it gets healthy and then definitely um, make you disciplined. Yeah, because some people do need more discipline, you know, <laughs> more concentration, and more focus. That's what I believe in, I tell you. But that's good that you did, that your mother made you get into martial arts. Very good. Um, and actually, your brother, did you, um, well, actually, did your brother take martial arts? You say he did, right? Yeah, we both did. So, okay. Well, which is good. Now, how old is your brother? Is okay. he older or younger than you? I'm the oldest. Oh, okay. He's younger than me. Okay, so does he do any poetry acting or anything else like that? No. No, we are uh, totally different. Totally different. Really? Yeah, he's not into the arts. I'm into the arts, so totally different. Oh, hmm. how interesting! Oh my goodness. Um, we were talking about earlier about um, I guess a movie that you did, and you were a heroin drug addict or mm -hmm. something like that. And what was the name of that movie? Love Unconditional. Okay, yeah. Uh, which was good. I urge everybody, the viewers, to check it out. And yes, we are live. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, um, Revolution. 
I wanted to talk about a couple of your pictures and stuff like that we yes. did earlier. And uh, you explained to me earlier how some of the photography you explained in um, like revolution. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell our viewers, you know, you had some, a couple pictures, like two or three pictures and that would explain the whole thing in revolution. So you, can you go in more detail about that? So, so I did a photo shoot with Robert Cooper and I titled the series revolution dash baptism. And the word revolution in itself means change. And bef so before you can um, change the world or change others, it means change yourself, um, change your thinking, change your thoughts. So once you change, uh, as a quote I put on Facebook, um, once you change your thoughts, you could change your world. Mm -hmm. So in that photo shoot around, I did revolution, the word change is a verb that implies action. So when you say I've changed, then you have to show your show how did you change, not just in the words, but in the actual an act. Mm. And people usually say, um, I, I changed, I'm a new person. I did a 360 and they're like, hmm. wait, pause, stop. You, you realize you said 360 and you just like went back to your old self. So it says I did a 180. A 180. <laughs> um, so in that particular photo shoot, I had locks. And then I'm in a warehouse and I'm walking towards the end of the warehouse and there's like a cloth on the ground, scissors, flower, um, throw some roses in, a, in the mirror. And then I won't tell everyone what's in the photo shoot. Deal. I have them go see it. But yeah. in that photo shoot, I end up cutting my hair. And after I end up cutting my locks off, I end up taking my clothes off and I'm walking away outside in, of the warehouse. I'm just standing off in the distance, just naked. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a picture to see. <laughs> <laughs> it's art. It's yeah, art. It's art. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it is art. Yes, um, very different. But um, I give you credit for doing that. <laughs> you know, well, they say you know when you do art and you, you don't have any clothes on, it, the art is you know the body too, which is really good. But uh, check it out because that's a really interesting picture. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now okay. I know you as midnight, okay? Yes. All the time. Um, actually, I've seen you in Bridgeport too with a girlfriend of mine, Cherie Humphrey. Oh yeah. Yeah. And very good um, person. Yeah, she is. She's doing something in a couple of months. Um, uh, very nice. And how did you hook up with her? Wow. Um she does a lot of poetry too. Yes. Yeah. I if I'll be honest, memory I, um I'm not sure what came first, the McDonald's Gospel Fest, oh, yeah. or her um, poetry show she does. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't want to say the McDonald's Gospel Fest. So I did a, I auditioned for the McDonald's Gospel Fest, um, made it to the competition portion of McDonald's Gospel, Gospel Fest. Mm -hmm. I believe I met her in uh, at one of the auditions, and then I I saw her again at. The actual competition, which was in Newark, New Jersey, at the Prudential Center. Right, right. I do um, help out there with her. This year, I didn't get a chance to go, but hopefully next year I can go to the gospel. Yes. I didn't uh, audition this year myself. I was too busy with a bunch of, <laughs> uh, of projects. Yeah. What I want to do is, um, I want to have you do one of your spoken words. Okay. <laughs> real quick, because we don't have that much time. You know, I tell you, I wish I had another half an hour. But anyway. I want you to um, do a poetry, like I said. Which one would? Which one are you gonna do? I think you said the one on love, right? I'm gonna do a love poem, chapter one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Tara, she. Oh, Tari, she. Excuse me, midnight. Schuler. When the day comes that the mountains of youth can no longer rejuvenate our bodies, I will still thirst for you. Even when our hair feels like Brillo pad, age scrubs away the smoothness in your hands, leave behind calluses and wrinkles, so I could tuck love notes in a small crease of your skin in the form of kisses. This is the harmony of matrimony, the bond before wedding rings, our heart sings duet, symphonies can only simulate our waited. I feel this sound, Resonating through our beings, this is better than seeing, I knew. You were the one. I wanted to hold hands till we were old and gray. I knew. You were the one. 
the first time I got gazed my eyes upon you, like a hot sun blazing the surface of African safari, I knew I was ready to die with you. Without role-playing Bonnie or Clyde and the only mentals we leave behind to remind people how grand our love was, our feelings, pictures, maybe children, and a tombstone. And while our bones are decaying in the coffin, buried in an earthly fermented soil, I'll walk the afterlife with you, walk through purgatory, walk through heaven or hell. Nobody knows which direction we go except God. So we hold on to our faith. If we end up at different places, I'll find you. I'll swim across the infinite universe of oceans, play hopscotch a little on Big Dipper, follow Orion's belt to the next constellations, search so many galaxies, Samsung around numbers to mark in their phone after so I can feel your embrace, hear the sound in your face so I can tell you the most important thing I've ever written that was and still is is I love you. That alone is a poem in itself, a metaphor. It gets no deeper than this. And if this is not meant for you, if we are not meant to be, if we are not meant to jump brooms, I hope you find your groove. And he kisses you every day so deep it leaves love notes in your skin in the form of parables. And every time he looks at you, he prays to God to give him revelation, written in your body language, understand the mission of the woman in you, learn from each other like Bibles so you can fold each other's arms, worship each other like revival until it feels like survival because this love is the only thing to bring you back from the dead. And when we go out, we're going to go out with a bang like a star, seeing his final days, exploding to a supernova, sending our love across the cosmos. If we're lucky enough, we'll turn into a black hole, pulling everything around us back into us, back to this beautiful blackness, back in the center of this something. There's no such thing as nothing. Only thing your mind cannot fathom. Back to beginning, back to tra tra tranquility, back to singularity, back to beginning before time began, before the Big Bang, back to our genesis. This is page one. How I first met you. You opened your mouth and it sounded like you were saying prayers. And I can hear God say, in the beginning, I shall recreate the heavens and the earth and the waters of the deep is upon your bodies and your skin. I need you to go forth into the world and teach my children how to love again. Wow. Peace. Wow. That's really nice. <laughs> that is really nice. Wow. And uh, what I noticed over at the Russell, you guys love to do poetry because you sit down in a couple of minutes and then you're writing something and then you're up on the uh, mic. Yes. Which is really, really good. And you, oh, and it's so interesting to see everybody do that. And everybody's into it. That is really good. Thank you. Yeah. And you wrote that too, huh? Oh, I wrote all my poetry, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Yeah, you did. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, um, check them out. And I also want to let you know. It's been a pleasure. Oh, and I was so you. excited to have you today, Tarishi. Tarishi. All right. I got that. Midnight Schuler. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you for having and me. And don't forget to continue to watch um, XSTV.org. Watch it, like it, and share it. See you next time. I'm taking a little bit, bit of vacation. I'll see you on my um, uh, new one again. Um, have fun and enjoy the summer. <laughs>